Okay. So Mayor Jack Froese, thank you very much for joining the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce. We really appreciate during this time, um, you still taking the time to come out and speak to some of our members, um, knowing that we are recording this and it will be available to our members on our website. We also would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the um, ceded territory, unceded territory of the Coast Salish nations, and we appreciate them for giving us the time and space here today. Um, so, Mayor Froze, I'm going to ask you to sort of kick off about what you've been working on right now and, and cover off a little bit what the township's up to. As you and I spoke just briefly before, things are changing every day for all of us. And so, where are we at with the township of Langley? Where are we at? Good question. Uh, as you said, this is changing rapidly and, you know, and I think uh, there are those that might think that uh, the municipality has information before you get it, but we're watching the same press releases, the same press conferences with Dr. Henry, uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry and, and uh, Minister uh, Dix when they announce what they're going to do. We're getting it at about the same time. So then it takes time for us to interpret what they're saying, get clarity on what, what the new orders are, recommendations are, and then incorporate into that into our day-to-day -day operations and also incorporate into you know, how the public interfaces with the township. And so, you know, it, it's, it, as we've been saying for the last eight, eight weeks, this is unprecedented in our lifetime uh, and we're learning as we go. There's no playbook uh, written for us. In fact, uh, I don't think we had pandemic in the Emergency uh, Pre Preparedness Act. So, you know, lots of changes. Uh, but the township of Langley, uh, along with the city of Langley, uh, you know, got the Emergency Operations Center up and running very early in this process about the middle of March, you know, it took about a week to get things organized by the end of, end of that, I call it the first week starting, you know, March, what was that, March 15th or something? Yeah. Uh, where we got the Emergency Operations Center up and running, primarily at first to uh, coordinate the information that was coming from different sources. And then uh, also very important to make sure the information that went out to our residences and residents and businesses was consistent and was in line with what the provincial health authorities were telling us. Uh, rather than have everyone tell, you know, have different messages going out from different people, uh, we made the decision very early at the Township of Langley to forward everything to our, our emergency operations center. And, uh, and that way we got a consistent messaging out and reduce the confusion. Yeah. That's been one of the Chamber's mandates all the way along is factual, consistent information and providing the proper, correct government sources so that we're not, yeah. you know, Keep the false information out of play. That's right. That's right. So the tol.ca website uh, has um, COVID information and that's updated regularly. So we always encourage people to go there first if they have a question because it's there. Yet uh, if the can't, question can't be answered, uh, you know, we immediately set up uh, a uh, email address that uh, concerns could be forwarded to and that they would respond to the emergency operations center. So, so that was how we started off. And and you know, it, it was uh, crazy days, those first, I call it the first two weeks. So the last two weeks of March were crazy days. We really were scrambling to uh, adjust to this new world. But once we got past that and got into April, uh, I think everyone was starting to understand, really had a good understanding of what we need to do. The distancing was so important and washing your hands uh, important. Uh, only going out when you have to go out, uh, those sorts of things uh, we've all gotten used to. It's become part of our life now. Uh, but at first it was, you know, should the playgrounds be closed? And that was a big decision. Uh, at, now when you look back and say at that moment, it wasn't such a big decision. Uh, I, like I, I heard one say, there are no good choices, just good decisions. And we have to make some quick decisions. And now uh, with, as things are starting to ease up and as people are becoming a lot more aware of what they need to do, we can start opening up facilities. Uh, for example, our community gardens were closed. Uh, any, any facility in our park that had, um, access to people where people could come and we couldn't, we couldn't control or we couldn't ensure that there'd be proper distancing or proper uh, sanitation. Uh, we closed all of these things like playgrounds, like community gardens, like dog parks. Uh, so community gardens have been opened April 24th, I believe. And uh, you know, there's, that, that was important, but we we're asking those users to self police it. And now uh, we've just opened up the dog parks. They're open again. And again, uh, as people are more aware of what they need to do. So limited amount of people in the dog parks and give, gives you an opportunity to take your your new dog your rescue dog out for a walk he's gone for lots of walks but i have to thank maribel for opening the dog park last week because he got his first taste of off leash run with me oh, and good. Was, was got the whole park to himself because nobody else realized it was open and he was having a blast so yeah, yeah. and and i see maribel is on is is on this too and i, I just want to say one thing we've been discussing the mayors have been working together uh through metro vancouver there's been a mayor has been a, a covid19 task force set up and it's all of the mayors in metro vancouver 
And one of the things that we're all really um, working towards is that we work together. And when we do open a dog park, that the township isn't doing it and the city isn't or vice versa. And then we get confusion amongst our residents. And uh, so throughout Metro Vancouver, we're working as best we can to, to be together and how we slowly open up our facilities back to the public and, and try to get some sort of a new normalcy going. I think you might have touched on something that's a little bit of concern to some people after the weekend. You say slowly opening up. Yeah. Because it seemed to be that um, a lot of Vancouverites, lower mainland people, yeah. I was in, I pop, popped into um, Columbia Valley parking lot north, actually just to meet up with somebody to exchange a gift. Yeah. And you thought that parking lot would be easy. It was packed yeah. Yeah. and people weren't being smart. Yeah. So I think, and, and a lot of people I think have concerns that so many people went running outside and our two week kind of phase two isn't quite yet. It's not supposed to happen until after the long weekend. So right. communication is going to be key, I think, mm -hmm. but how, how can the township sort of help mitigate that? Yeah. You know, one thing you, you raised a good point uh, as we close, you know, some parks got closed, parking lots got closed. It forces people to fewer and fewer areas. Uh, so, you know, part of the, the plan and opening up is ensure that there's enough space for people to go to. And Dr. Henry has been, and the minister has been saying, um, stay in your local parks. Don't go out of your area. You know, they're, going to, they're opening up the provincial parks for day use, uh, I believe, this weekend, which is great because we need these spaces to, to go and, you know, clear, clear your head from being isolated for a lot of people who are stuck in their homes with their yeah. And, and learning how to become teachers, uh, homeschooling and that sort of thing. So it's important that they get open, but they'll only stay open if, if people realize and recognize that they have to still do the distancing, still do the hand washing, uh, make sure that they are, are there with their family units uh, or household units, that uh, it, it's important. And if they're not, then just stay apart. You can be at you know, picnic table, different picnic tables and still converse. So mm -hmm. as long as people do that, I think it'll be good. Um, I know I heard on the radio coming in this morning that, uh, you know, the beaches were, were full, but when the rangers, uh, park rangers were out there, they said, yeah, they're full. When you look at it from the distance, it looks like a lot of people, but they were keeping their distance you know, from each yeah. other on the beach. So um, hard to say, I think it's going to be up to all of us to ensure that we follow these rules so that this doesn't go the other way again. We want to, we want to be able to open things up. Yeah. From a business perspective, I've said, we've got one chance to do this right the first time. Yeah. One chance. Um, and I mean, I applaud Dr. Bonnie Henry and, and Minister Dix um, for everything that, that we've done so far, but I don't want Dr. Bonnie coming on next two weeks from now and going, okay, you blew it back in your house. Right. You know, I mean, none of us do. And the business community from that perspective can't go through another phase one. Um, I, I think, you know, and that's where I'll, I'll sort of bridge us over into more of the sort of questions is um, I know the great work that the township um, team, Val and team are working on for the small businesses in your community, but did you want to sort of give us a bit of an update of what the township is working on and how they're helping businesses through this crisis? Yeah, so uh, I know um, Val Gath is on, on board here too, and she can help me out uh, if there's any, any uh, really tough questions that I miss, but certainly uh, we, our, our, uh, the, the Emergency Operations Center working with our economic development have been really working towards the, um, a recovery um, process, how we're going to recover. Uh, one thing that was important is to ensure that on our website we had the information on what stores are open, what businesses are there to serve you. And there, there's probably 400 businesses that uh, we found that are open to serve you that are, are deemed essential. Uh, you know, it, it's, we may think we need to get a haircut, that that's essential, but it's not quite. It's coming, but it's not okay. quite. But a lot of these other ones, like you need to get your car repaired because you have to get to work. You know, a nurse has to go to the hospital. But, to do her, to do her, her or his shift, uh, they need a, a functioning vehicle. So those sorts of things are open. Financial institutions are open. And we have a, a complete list on the TL, TL website uh, for that. So that I think is important for people to know where they can go and to also give um, businesses uh, the, you know, the ability to, to show that they're open. The other thing is assisting um, businesses in a variety of different ways. Uh, I know the provincial and federal government have come up with a variety of different programs and we've accumulated all those different financial programs on our website also. So businesses can go to that website, find out what's available to, to assist them through this process. Um, and it's ever so, changing. Every right. morning it's a new announcement as we all know. So it's I know it, it, it is changing daily. And you know, it's hard, like I said earlier, we're watching the news like you're watching the news and we're getting the updates as they come down. We don't get a lot of, uh, a lot of headway on, on some of these uh, new initiatives that come out. So, so we want to be able to coordinate that in a way that assists our business community. Uh, so, so that's some, some of the things we've done. 
Uh, businesses uh, also, uh, the province came through with uh, a, a tax relief uh, for um, property taxes. So they've uh, changed the date to, I believe it's October. Uh, so that's assisting business in, in that regard. Uh, we also, at the Township of Langley, uh, you know, and every municipality has done a different way. They all have kind of their own, you know, looking at their own municipality, how they should handle this is for, for taxes. We reduce the penalty from, which is legislatively required at 10%. To 1.75% on the first business day uh, of uh, July, and that's for residences. And then for businesses, it's, it's in October. Our commercial and business, based on the provincial guidelines, uh, so that's been reduced to to ease the burden on residents. But then, middle of November, it goes. We have to add the 8.25 to make up the 10%, which is something that's out of our control, and right. uh, we, we we have to do that as a municipality. So we, we've reduced it that way. We've also reduced our our, um, pro, our property tax. We were coming in around 4%, 4.11, and with some internal borrowing uh, we've, and some deferrals, we've uh, been able to reduce this year's tax increase to 2%. But I should, you know, put this little caveat, we reduce it by internal borrowings and by deferral, which means at another date this, this has to come due. We, we can borrow from our own internal reserves, which the province has, has opened up, but, you know, we've done that. So it, it eases the burden this year, but we all know that all of these programs, no matter what level of government, um, we're going to be paying for this in some fashion over the next, I don't know, year, two years, decade, uh, to to get through this crisis. So, so we're doing what we can at least to to ease the burden for our, our businesses and our residents. I my daughter is 22 years old, university student, and coming into her final year of university. And she said to me the other day, "How are we paying for all of this, Mom?" And I said, "I'm not. You and your children are." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and our country has gone through crisis before, world wars, uh, and you know, two world wars uh, through the depression. Um, a lot of initiatives had to be taken then too to get the economy going and, and uh, we recovered from all of those things. So I have complete confidence in our country and in our the resiliency of uh, Canadians that we will uh, find our way through this too. And, uh, but it's something that's, it's, uh, I think it's testing all of us and uh, we're learning a lot from it. I agree. And it's not all doom and gloom. We've heard there is that part of it. We, you know, the announcements come out that another business is closing or deciding that this isn't going to work for them. But then from the other side of it, you see, for me, like I see members working with a restaurant group, working with a nursery, working with a farm to pull it all together really quickly to try and mitigate the circumstances. I mean, these are not partners that you would normally see working together. So when you see local businesses really thinking outside that box and working together, it's great. Um, Jeanette did ask a question, um, if we go back slightly to the enforcement of the new rules when we come to phase two, will the rules be done by the bylaw enforcement offices of the city and the township? It's my understanding, as Bonnie Henry has said since she started all of her conversations with us every day at three, is that she's not into fining and jailing and authority running. She's into guidance and reminding more so people that that's not the way to do it let's look at it this way WorkSafe has even come out to say in a call that i was with them last week that they're not going to come out to say you did this wrong you're going to be fine this they're coming out to work with people to see how they can get them up and running and make it work for them that they're not the, the intent is not fining or anything like that i'm assuming that sort of from the same perspective will be your departments as well yeah it is uh We've always had a, a philosophy here that we want to work with people first. Uh, there's certain, obviously, there's some bylaws that, that are enforced. Uh, but it, when we're working through with businesses and with residents on some of the issues that come up and that have made it extremely difficult because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have relaxed uh, some of the bylaws. Uh, we don't, we're not putting out a big list, but bylaw officers are asked to have a little bit more discretion uh, in, in uh, enforcing. And certainly when it comes to businesses, I know uh, WCB, uh, they're opening up businesses that were deemed uh, non-essential, but as, as long as they have a plan in place, uh, as long as they have a safety plan in place, they don't have to submit it. What I understand, maybe you can correct me, that's what I heard, you don't have to submit it, but they have to have a plan in place to open up their business so that they can carry on. And WCB is there to support the businesses, and I think it's in the province's best interest to get the economy going, but do it safely. And it's definitely going to be a sector by sector and a business yeah. by business. Square footage is going to come into play, the amount of employees you yeah. have. All, there's going to be so many factors that it's going to have to be mitigated on a case by case basis. Yeah, and businesses that have been open uh, throughout this uh, this time that were deemed essential, and the food the food uh, businesses, you know, the grocery stores and markets are a good example of the changes they had to do very rapidly 
to be able to accommodate their sales and is no different than any other store. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, I have a business too, and we reduced it to six people in uh, shopping at a time. We put stickers on the floor to, for the distancing. We put barriers up at the, at the cash register. So uh, things that have been done and had to be done quickly in the food and food business are now being adopted by other businesses. And uh, yeah. I think, I think those lessons learned and, and, and as long as they continue to follow that, I think we'll, ha- we'll be on a good path. And so looking at the phase two in the reopen, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but no. let's, let's go a little bit into the what, what possibly yeah. is the outlook for um, Township addressing your own reopening when it comes to rec facilities and daycare facilities yeah. and things like that. Like, I know that a yeah. lot of people out there rely on um, summer programs for their kids. What yeah. are the next steps? Yeah. Yeah, so part of the, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Emergency Operations Center recovery uh, planning is just you know, is just getting underway now. And to look at uh, department by department, recreation is certainly one department, where we can uh, start to reopen these things and, and how we can do that. So that's that's an ongoing process. We don't have, like I said, don't have the crystal ball. We don't have that all in place yet. As we're hearing that things are opening up, they're looking at each department and how they can um, start bringing bringing our, our systems back online. And uh, so, so it's, it's happening. Uh, and uh, one thing we want to make sure is that we do it safely and, and that uh, people aren't put at risk. And that's one of the big reasons we had to close things down in, in the parks. The parks never closed, but some of the facilities closed is that we can't ensure that we can keep it sanitized, that people do the distancing. And so we can't, we want to make sure we don't put anybody at risk. So as things reopen, they have to be done in a manner that is safe for all the users of, of our of our recreation facilities. No, that makes, and it makes yeah. sense. No. And that was the longest answer saying, I don't know. No, <laughs> no, it's what so, Again, you know, and the plans are still, I mean, everybody's That's just, right. the announcement was Wednesday and everybody's like, okay, this is what we're doing. Now we need yeah. to look at how phase two, phase three, phase four affects yeah. each of us. Um, yeah. And our, and our businesses, a variety of businesses, because again, can affect everybody differently. Yeah. Um, so there was a question submitted to us that says, what is the relationship between the township and the health minister, Adrian Dix, and can you supersede his recommendations? Uh, well, it's a good question because there is some confusion. Uh, certainly when, uh, when the health ministry declared uh, a public state of health, emer- or health emergency, then those orders, uh, the immediate orders that came down, no one can supersede. Those are orders from the province. And then they declared a provincial state of emergency. When a provincial state of emergency uh, is declared, we all have to follow that. The municipalities are really, uh, we're creatures of the province. We were enacted under provincial legislation and the province and federal government will always uh, supersede our, our reg- I, can't, I can't put a regulation that, that would supersede theirs. We can't do that. But we're talking about recommendations. Orders, definitely, there's a line. Orders, we all follow. Uh, recommendations are recommendations and we have to determine and interpret those recommendations as best we can to ensure uh, safety of our residents. So let's take the two meter distancing as a recommendation that we should all be two meters apart. And, and that's really been working well. Uh, so in our parks, uh, we do have trails that sometimes aren't two meters wide. Uh, we put signs up, you know, I don't know if you've seen those, the eagle with the wing, the wingspan that's two meters apart or the length of a cougar, two meters. It gives that visual. It actually got me the other day yeah. at Campbell Valley. I looked, I had to double take because I thought yeah. it was a cougar in, in the area sign because I'm used to being up on the right. coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so you know, we have to make sure we, we get those things going. So, uh, making sure we can do it safely is important, and and uh, so that's why we interpreted those recommendations from the, from the province and had to close things down. Now, as things open up, we can put signage. People understand the recommendations, but we can we don't. A recommendation is not an order. Uh, certainly, uh, I know. Take uh, the um, community gardens. So they were listed as essential on the long list the province put out as essential service community gardens. So we had them closed, uh, and it wasn't an order from the province, but we interpreted that to keep them closed until we could come up with the proper signage and 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 meet with all or talk to all of the uh, user groups so that we we would be you know certain that safety protocols would be followed. So so yeah, we we follow the recommendations, but we uh, don't want to. Uh, we really shouldn't be superseding them. We're just interpreting them. So I think, you know, it, it's a complicated uh, answer to a simple question, but. And what works for, yeah. for the township might not work for the city of Vancouver. That's right. That's, That's right. And, you know. It might not work for somebody yeah. else. I mean, it, yeah. the population base is also going to be part of it. Size. I mean, exactly. in the north, in a small community, they maybe didn't close it right from the very beginning because they yeah. sat down with the 20 users and said, these are the rules. That's right. Sure. That's, right. That's a bit harder to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
there and one of the other questions that popped up um it, we've kind of already covered off on it but again it cut, touches on what i mentioned earlier does the township have a tentative date for opening up now we've already opened up a lot of the parks and you've yeah, put yeah. In things yeah. into place but there's like yeah i i mean the fear is people are just going to ignore, ignore those and start running out there right away, which is yeah. sort of what's happened. Yeah. Well, the parks uh, in the township were, were not closed. Uh, our, we closed parking lots. The parks were open. We closed um, playgrounds. Uh, we closed, like as mentioned, the dog parks were closed. They're now open. Uh, the community gardens are closed. They're now open. But the parks themselves weren't closed. Uh, it, it, so, so we want people to get out and use and go for walks and, and recreate. We're not taking any register or any bookings uh, from any sports groups or organized sports on our playing fields yet. That doesn't stop you from going out there and uh, kicking a soccer ball around with your child if you want. Right. To. It's, it's a family unit, so they're not closed. But you know, I, th I think your question more goes towards the, the playground apparatus. How we're going to reopen that, and that's where I believe uh, with our uh, recovery plan, the emergency operations center is working on. That's where that'll come out. I don't have a date, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, again, we're following Dr. Henry's uh, recommendations and orders and slowly opening things up again as we can see that people um, are, are following the proper protocols. Playgrounds are hard because it's hard to get kids to wash their hands and that's sanitize right. in between each yeah. play and it's yeah. it's yeah it's really hard to yeah. work and around. And that's where the guardian their parent or whoever's with them is, is there to, to, to ensure that they're following the rules too as best they can. As, as kids. Exactly. And I know the, the province has talked about how are we going to look at opening up uh, organized sports? Um, we're going to be thinking about it differently. We're going to be doing different things. And, and they're ask, actually asking the organized sports organizations to come up with how they're going to do it safely and putting it in their hands to come up with a plan. How are we going to do some of these things safely? And as that, as that uh, evolves, we'll be uh, responding uh, to that by opening up and taking registrations from sports groups. But again, it's following the province. We're, we have to follow the province uh, lead on this. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, what have you heard, if anything, from the agriculture community um, working with um, the township sort of regarding um, Im immigration workers, people coming in? Yeah. Um, I know that I've had some chats with some people. They are, as, a, as an organization, as a whole in our province, they're doing really good work with bringing them in early and having them quarantine like the yeah. rules. They, um, but have you, have you had heard that it's an issue for us here in Langley? I haven't heard too much. Uh, I do know that the, you know, the, the province, I believe the province or the federal, someone's funding the isolation. So a worker comes over from, let's say, Mexico, they need to isolate. And that's being, they're being paid and the wages are being paid and the costs are, are being borne by the, the province. So it's taking, it's relieving the farmer from having to pay for that, which would be a great expense. Also, I believe that they're assisting with uh, the increased cost to fly them here and fly them home. So there's some assistance there. And it's being handled by the province, uh, not by the municipalities when it comes to safety of the workers, the, their uh, living accommodations and, uh, and, and how they're working in the field. So that's, that's a provincial mandate. So it hasn't come to me, but I, I have heard, yeah, there's some added uh, burden of cost to a farmer when they now have to have different living accommodations, there has to be more space and living accommodations. Right. So that's, that's changing things, but it's more of a, it's not really a municipal level, it's more of a provincial level. So uh, I haven't heard a lot to my office, but I know that they're working through it, but there has been some support. And that's primarily where the agriculture industry, I think is feeling it is, is through the, the temporary foreign worker program. A lot of agriculture uh, will carry on and they don't rely on the temporary foreign worker program. And they're no, no different than any other business. They have to ensure that their staff are, are, um, are protected. And uh, again, it's essential that we feed our country and feed our people. So there's much um, working, they're working through as, as farmers do. They, they, they're uh, resilient and innovative. Very much so. And we also have a lot of UPIC farms in yeah. Langley. And I know that a lot of them are, are getting asked those questions on their social media pages. Are, is your UPIC going to be open? Is this? And I know that they're really trying to work out a way to do it safely for people. But again, it's going to come down to people being smart. That's right. And it's, it's each individual business coming up with a safe uh, plan that they can put a plan in place that's safe for everyone. And uh, I, I think they will come up with ways of doing it and ensuring that there's distancing. We're doing it now, every day. We're, we're, I had to come to the office here and make sure I'm distanced all the time. And we're doing it now and people are learning how to do it. So I think it'll be no different than, let's like, say you pick farms and farm markets and, and that kind of thing. We'll be able to, to conduct business safely. Perfect. Um, Jeanette did pop up a question into chat. Um, have any of our seniors' homes had a COVID-19 outbreak? I don't believe in the township, no. Well, the um, uh, 
happening? Provincial uh, health, they give the stats for the health, um, like Fraser Health, Coastal Health, um, Vancouver Coastal Health, Fraser Health. They don't specifically uh, say which municipality has um, the outbreaks. However, they are mentioning the different uh, care homes. And I don't believe we have them in Langley. You know, Abbotsford has had a couple. I haven't heard. Langley Lodge had the one Langley initial. Lodge, that's right. Paper, and then they got it under control and then it back, opened back up with a staff member. And then they, yeah. I believe, gotten it back under control. Yeah. Yeah, and the province has been very uh, good at coming in with their SWAT teams or whatever they have to immediately, you know, go into a facility and make sure that their protocols are followed and strict protocols. So again, um, they're working pretty hard on that. I think from the beginning, the change of staffing regulations for that is is yeah. one of the key ones. Is making sure that's not working in three different homes at a time, trying to keep them into one facility yeah. at a time to sort of again stop the spread. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So one of my favorite topics, as you know, um, SkyTrain. Oh, so yes. crystal ball moment as, as, as your other role at Metro yeah. Vancouver, what is going to be the fate of my SkyTrain to Langley? Yes, yes. good question. Um, and you know, that, that launches into the whole question on public transportation, what's happening at TransLink, uh, basically throughout the world. But yeah. I, I know in Canada, it's, it's, it's also right now major cities in North America where the tr the, all the transit authorities at this point in their operation, I'll get to the SkyTrain question, but I'm gonna start yeah. with this, this question, are, are suffering. Uh, not only are they having to have distancing on, on the buses or on the trains, uh, people have stopped going to work or they're, they're not using them as much. I shouldn't say stop. Uh, Translink is still servicing about 75,000 people a day and it's in, starting to increase slowly. Uh, and those people need, they rely on transit. So when the province was talking about opening up the economy, it's about the same time TransLink was talking about cutting routes and laying people off, yeah. uh, which is going in the opposite direction. But we, TransLink has no, had no choice. This is how we're going to fund this. TransLink was losing projected. Now, it may not in reality come out as high, but it's hard to do projections. $75 million a month. So if you're up by a few million, it's still a, a big number. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so 11th hour negotiations with the province, they've come, there was an announcement last week where uh, the, the May 18th uh, layoffs and route cancellations have been canceled now. We're not gonna be doing those because the province said they will assist TransLink, which, is, which was, uh, I think, a lifesaver for, for our economy to get going. And we're also gonna continue to push for federal support. And tonight on, we have council, today is Monday, and, and uh, I have a motion on council to, to support the call of uh, the uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the, uh, it's CUDA, it's the uh, there's an organization of, tr of public transportation agencies for the federal government to inject funds into transit agencies across the country, and TransLink is one of them. So, certainly, the operation if we you know we have our plans, we have uh, you know an aggressive plan of expanding the transit network, but now we're faced with a new world. So, I'm going to go back now to, to SkyTrain, which is a major projects, and major projects are still on our books, we still want to pursue them. And one of the things that um, the province and the federal government, especially, is, is in part of our economic recovery of the, of the country, uh, it, it might be a really good time for us to complete some of these major projects, just to keep people working. And uh, SkyTrain is a shovel-ready pro um, program or project that we can uh, lobby, continue our lobbying efforts with the federal government to get the funding to get that going, because that's going to help kickstart our economies to build these, these uh, infrastructure projects. And it's not just transit. But certainly the one to Langley is still on our uh, projections. We want to see that happen. But as you know, we're in, an, we're in a world now where things have changed. We're, uh, we're having to dip into reserves. We're having to um, find that, those kind of dollars just to keep the system operating. However, money that's been put aside for it uh, cannot be used because it's just, you know, money that's been uh, provided to translate from the federal government for SkyTrain is still there for SkyTrain. It's not being taken away. That pool is still there. Okay. That's right. So getting it, so we have funded it um, partway to Langley, getting that next um, funding to get it all the way to Langley, again, is up in the air. It was up in the air before COVID, it's still up in the air, but it's certainly, I think, maybe could be a good time for us to get some of these big shovel-ready projects uh, built. Historically, you touched on it earlier, this is, you know, Canadians are pretty resilient and we've survived yeah. World War One, World War II, the Depression, yeah. the Spanish flu, yeah. um, all of, of those things. After those things, initial impact, the way for the federal government to get the economy back on is, you just mentioned, shovel-ready ground projects, that big infrastructure projects. So 
that is still something that you're hearing from both the yes. province and the feds that's going to be how we we get through this at the other the other end of the tunnel that's right still hearing that they're still looking uh, they have their uh, task force uh, or, or their committee set up to look at recovery look at how we're going to rebuild the country get the economy going so certainly uh, we may be in a good position to um, to get our sky train to Langley because it's it's important and one of the things we have to recognize that in this new world how it evolves and that over the next year two years three years we don't know how long this will last is that a bus now can't we, we can't jam people on the sky train we can't jam people on the buses that means we need even more buses that means we need even more sky trains we want people to use it and feel comfortable using it that they can use it safely so those things have to aren't, aren't you know all worked out yet but just looking down the road uh, over the next couple of years at least it, it's going to change how we move about well and i mean for the last five four years like we've worked so hard to get people out of their cars and on the transit yes. and i think yeah. this situation has pushed them right back into their vehicles yeah. um you know if they are moving around they're they're doing it by car if they can so yeah it's definitely going to be um i think a, a project for all of us to work on yeah. um and if the chamber can and can work with the township and the city on the what comes next for skytrain we're here you know that one of yes. our definite um get the, another project where Langley's sitting pretty good we've got a couple of shovel ready projects including yeah. highway expansion to 264 right. so yeah so there's some, there's some some good things happening and, and uh you know 260th interchange it looks like they're paving there it should be open fairly soon crossing my fingers they said winter 2020 but they didn't tell us which winter the one at the beginning or the one at the end so, <laughs> so i think it'll be the one at the end no but it's well, coming along that's going to help yeah. We we're blessed that we're we're going through COVID with sunshine and and it kind of helps keep the spirits up. I have friends from Toronto that were very upset with snow on Mother's Day. Let me yes. tell you. Yeah, so. yeah, that's yeah, not not good. I know I've been talking to relatives in Ontario and saying yeah, it was really tough out here. You know, it was you know, warm, too a little bit too warm. <laughs> yeah, it was too yeah. hot. We had to go get eight, yeah. eight minutes out. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, does anybody, if anybody would like to, now is a good time to enter any questions you may have into the chat box because I've gone through most of the questions that I was given. Um, so if anybody has any further questions for Mayor Froze, I'm happy to uh, engage in those now. Um, so speaking of our highway, so you were saying 216 is still looking for this year even. Did they oh, yeah. shut down very much with COVID initially? No, I don't think so. Maybe okay. they just had to come out. It, it seemed to be going. One of the delays was the preload and that's out of everybody's um, hands uh, it was still settling so you can't build until it stops settling so that, that right. slowed it down a bit and i didn't think they i don't think the province expected it to uh, take that long you know on a couple of other things we'll talk about uh, some events in the township that have had to be cancelled or changed and uh, mayor val and i were uh, this morning doing a little video uh, to promote the langley walk so langley walk's been cancelled but we're going to do a virtual langley walk so you know do your five kilometers and you can do it all in one time or you can do it over several days uh, send your information in and uh, you'll get your crest. So it's, it'll be on our websites, uh, both the city website and the township website. So things like that, we're learning to do things a little bit differently and we're going to get by. You know, oh, doing more of that. We're hosting dinner meetings without dinner. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, bring your own dinner. <laughs> yeah. Bring your own dinner. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah. And I get, I think that's part of it too. When we look at the business community, yeah. uh, when we look at our, our organizations locally, I mean, I'm blown away by the amazing good work that our nonprofits are doing yeah. under tremendous strain. Yeah, exactly. And and their bodies, because there's some people that just can't go out. Yeah. Um, they're, they're just, and, and again, I've said it since I moved here, Langley's a big city with a huge heart, a huge yeah, exactly. community heart. And yeah. I think we've done a really good job of helping each other and we just have to continue to do so. Yeah. Um, and you know, and business and municipalities are learning to uh, do, do our work differently. Um, a lot of my day is Zoom meetings like this uh, with Translink to Metro Vancouver. So my commute is walk downstairs and sit down in the kitchen and get on to the meeting. And we're learning that you know, a lot of business can be done without having to physically be, be in a, a certain location. There still, I think, will be there's always going to be that need for that face-to-face -face, uh, contact and conferences and conventions have their role. Uh, but for now, we're learning a different way. And some of the things that we're learning today are going to carry on into the future. Uh, new tools that we're becoming comfortable with. Uh, two months ago, I didn't know, uh, I never heard of Shopify. Now it's one of the leading Canadian uh, stocks out there, you know, as far as uh, companies doing very well. I never heard of them before. And our business um, got right onto Shopify and it, it helped our business. I know a lot of uh, 
and we're not alone because it's it just skyrocketed. So um, businesses and municipalities are innovating and finding ways of doing work that is sometimes a little bit more efficient than what we were doing before. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely yeah. better for the environment because we're not all racing yeah. to and from meetings. Yeah, exactly. The air is cleaning up a bit. It's you know, the roads are a little bit emptier. And when you think of the, uh, we talked about some infrastructure projects and and you know congestion. Well, that's eased up a bit, but. Uh, we still want to see people working and getting to work. But I think we're, we're going to have some lessons out of all of this that we'll take with us that will help business and will help our residents and our government agencies and how they, how they work. You brought up the road. So I have to ask, why do we have the lane singled down to single file on 200 still? There's nobody working. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just ask it. down there and take a look. For a friend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I will find out for you. <laughs> it's the only bottleneck in all yeah. the lane right now i giggle but there's nobody here working why are we yeah. around <laughs> good time. So, you know one thing you, you, you talk about that it's actually we're, our our work crews are out there working it's a good time to work in our uh, recreation facilities and and do the upgrades that we need to do and the maintenance that needs to be done because they are closed some of them yeah. and uh, there is less traffic so uh, we're finding that our normal operations other than recreation uh, operations are still proceeding and uh, you know, we're able to get some of the work done and keep our workforce working as much as possible. We want to see everybody working, but unfortunately, it's not possible. No, exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for this today. I haven't had any other questions pop up. So, okay. um, Jack, thank you. And thank you for always being available to work with the Chamber yeah. and take your calls. And I really appreciate the relationship that we've had. So thank, thank you. you very much for that. And uh, as things come up and things change, um, we are looking at talking to your your yeah. calendar people um, regarding our May, our March dinner meeting was supposed to be our Langley leadership panel. Okay. Um, and of course that was the one that was the initial cancel and everybody kind of went home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're looking at doing it in June. So I'm okay. sure. Okay. Out, so we may, uh, you may be attending a non dinner dinner meeting sooner than you think. Love to. Yeah. Awesome. Love to. Yeah. Okay. I'll do my own barbecue and then. <laughs> Yeah, and we've also put up a list of all your mem our different members that are offering different discounts and stuff special, so you can oh, even perfect. order them that night. There oh, you. perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do a take out that. That'll be perfect. <laughs> take out works. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Thank you again well, thank for you. your time. Thank you to everybody for joining. And Jeanette also just popped into the chat box. So yeah. Thank you very much for today. Thank you. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.